I am super excited to introduce to you my new training partner, Nico. His cuteness alone is enough reason to watch this video. So, have had him less than a week. I'm excited to get him out there on the trails and training soon. Just got back from his first vet visit, so he's a little tired. But he's perfect to introduce today's topic of fundamentals on the mountain bike. I've been riding for several years and just took a mountain bike class to go back to fundamentals and I had some improvements I can make, which is pretty cool, especially if you're just starting off or if you're a more advanced rider, you can learn from the fundamentals just like Nico's gonna learn very, very soon. Hey coach Eric and Nico here, bringing you a new video every week on mistakes that I have made, bringing lessons learned on to you so you can become a better triathlete. Today we are talking about three top fundamentals for the mountain bike. I took a recent class and I learned a lot. I didn't necessarily learn anything new, but it was things that I had forgotten that instantly I started to become a better rider when I was out there for this half day clinic. I've been riding the mountain bike for five years. This is only my third clinic. And I really wish I'd taken one at least once a year. The off season is a great time to practice those fundamentals when you're not worried about getting in all those miles or racing really hard. Yet another mistake I've made. So hit the subscribe button so you get a free weekly video. This fundamentals class I took was actually by a group called Ninja. I'll put a link below. I obviously get no affiliation with them whatsoever. I thought it was great that they were great teachers. They keep the class sizes pretty small, two instructors to 12 students. The best quote Jeremiah said when I was out there was, you are not along for the ride. Take control of that mountain bike and have fun. And Nico here totally agrees with me. So the top three things I took away that I want you to, if you're not doing them, please do them. This is the foundation of mountain biking. And if you're already doing them, fantastic. You've got a solid foundation. You can feel good about that and then move on to more advanced technique. The number one thing you gotta have is good body position. So if you're really getting into that stance where it's like the ready position, and they said they use it with kids, they call it the angry gorilla. And I'm not a kid, but I like that term. I'm like an angry gorilla, alert, ready to go. You got the arms up, the elbows are out, the knees are out a little bit, your weight's over that bottom bracket, and you are ready for anything. Anything weird happens, you're separated from that bike, you can move appropriately, and you're not gonna go down right away. You got that angry, ready gorilla stance. Number two takeaway that I got is you wanna be looking three to five seconds down the trail, which can vary depending on how fast you go. And wherever you go, you're gonna hit. So if you see that rock up ahead and you stare at it, you're probably gonna hit that rock even though you're saying, don't hit the rock, don't hit the rock. Well, what you think about, that's where you're going to. So, and again, I already knew that, but it's just like that extra reminder was like, yeah, okay. So as you're scanning three to five seconds ahead, you see that rock, but then you quickly find the path you want and stay on the path you want. And you're constantly looking at three to five cents, seconds ahead. And so that what's right in front of you, you have got to trust. That's the key word they use, you gotta trust that your bike is gonna roll over that. You're on these big mountain bike tires, you are gonna roll over it. And besides, you've already scanned it a few, three to five seconds ago before you got there, so you know it's gonna be okay. And it might not be perfect because you're not gonna always take the line that you want, but you've seen it, you're looking at the best track you wanna go to and you're trusting you're gonna roll over what's right in front of you. And finally, number three is braking. So when you're riding, just have one finger on each brake. If you have too many, out there, then you're more likely to smash in the brakes that you don't want to do, or you don't have good grip. If you uh, get rid of even that second finger, that's got a lot of grip. And so um, you want as many fingers on the brakes as, as on the handlebars rather as possible, but just the one on the brake, you're not going to lose a lot of handling if you just have the one finger and you're not likely to push the brake hard. And so you got that, you're riding with those fingers out front. And then the rear brake is going to help you slow down. The front brake is going to make you stop. And so as you come to a stop, you want to not slam on them, but slowly push on each of them. And so you end up coming to a stop and then keeping that weight over the bottom bracket in your ready position and get those heels down when you want to stop. So you got heels down, putting that weight there and slightly feathering and lowering on both those brakes and you're stopping just like that and in control. Right, Nico? Yeah, he agrees. Okay, that's it. Short and sweet, top three fundamentals for review. Get in that ready position, angry gorilla stance, ready for anything, looking three to five seconds ahead. And when you got a break, just use two fingers and get those heels down and you'll come to a stop. If you can do those three things, you are on your way with a solid foundation. Work on that. Put a comment below, put the top fundamental technique that has helped you with mountain biking or even the best 
uh, mountain bike camp or teacher that you've had, which can be helpful. And when this guy wakes up, we will see you on the trails.